Monday, April 3rd, 2017, Honda launched one of its most ambitious exercises. The goal? To set the world lap record for a front-wheel drive production car on the legendary Nürburgring Nordschleife in their new Civic Type R. They succeeded. Setting a lap time of 7.43.8, they smashed their past attempt by a whole six seconds. So imagine me, a sim racing degenerate, coming upon my very first Civic Type R in Gran Turismo 7 and not only realizing that it's darn fun and balanced to drive, but also reasonably quick for what it is. Mind you, this is in the pre-1.13 era, so well-balanced cars in GT7 are basically unicorns at this point. Q the realization that it's time to recreate this now classic record. Naturally, I trawled the internet for all the information I could find regarding the mods done to the record setting version of the car, and then set to approximate them as closely as possible using the tuning workshop, which in this case amounted to just one stage of weight reduction, adding a roll cage, and bolting on some sports medium tires. Stage two, of course, involves you clicking that subscribe button to not miss any more degenerate sim racing record attempts. With our car prepped and with a completely default tune, we hit the tarmac and see just how closely GT7 can recreate a slice of history. The spiritual return of one of the classic JDM cars of the 90s, the legendary Honda Civic. What can it do here in, well, I was going to say 2017, technically 2022, can it recreate its record from 2017 as we break hard into Sabine Schmidt's curve, turn in, Pretty reasonable turn in for a stock tune on a front wheel drive car. Considering this is pre 1.13 as well, one of the, the big advantages of the Civic Type R is that they really did a lot to tune out the torque steer, so it doesn't really feel as much like a front wheel drive car as it should by rights. You can feel that going into Hudson Buck. I'm almost losing the rear end, but it's so beautifully controlled. It's so easy to pivot the car around and transfer the weight. It's like a front wheel drive ballerina easy through there. Compared to that Porsche lap, so, so easy. You can really munch the curves. It's a very high car with its default suspension setup, so no worries about the high curbing here at the Nürburgring. Of course, these speed sections can take a little while because it's not the highest horsepower car in the world. It's very comfortable to drive. It's very sporty. It's probably the kind of balance of performance that I would want personally on a road car. It's the kind of thing that's not too much to put down in a reasonable setting. Maybe slightly underpowered for the Nürburgring Nordschleife, but it makes it a very fun and controllable driving experience. So, very good newbie car here in uh, Gran Turismo 7 if you've not thought about trying it. Nice and easy through Schwedenkreuz. Now braking hard. At no point does it feel uncomposed. At no point do I feel like I'm losing control of the car. You just turn in, it turns in, it balances itself on the way out, and that's pretty remarkable considering nothing at all has been done to the tuning of the car other than a small weight reduction to match what was actually done for the record lap attempt. Now, of course, on sports medium tires, definitely not the best tires in the world, as you can see through the understeer there. Whoa! Losing the rear a little bit. The Aero and GT7 still kind of showing its, its flaws there. But then again, the Civic Type R, definitely not the most aero-laden car in the world either. You can definitely see the understeer, and I can tell you that understeer is predominantly being created by the lack of grip on the tires as we cross past Jimmer's Rebel Tree. Salute. And shift down a gear. Great grip through there, just balancing the car. Just, you can just see me feeling it out in the wheel there. It's so fun, it's so responsive, it's so communicative. <laughs> Even with that uh, bout of understeer at the end there. Coming up into stage two now, or sector two rather. Oh, the, look at it just rotate itself, just rotated its own rear end around that corner. Of course, there's a bout of understeer on the exit, which isn't perfect, but I mean, for a stock tuned car, that is phenomenal. I'm having the time of my life right now. Look at that, look how much I'm, I'm able to wrangle the car. Understeer aside, <laughs> doesn't seem to mind the grass too much though. Slowing down for the slowest corner of the track again. Second gear, nice and easy. Bit of understeer again, nothing tragic though. Fully expected for the kind of rubber that we're on. These are no racing slicks. Which is pretty remarkable when you think about it. Great turn in there, way better than the old Civic. And now this is by rights where the car might begin to struggle a little bit more. This is the big uphill climb section. You can tell I'm going to really rev it out because this car is VTEC'd out of its mind. All of the power is in the super high revs. So you can see I'm really, really letting it rev out there. 
so easy on the brakes. Stock brakes too. Bit understeer, just for a change. And now the big climb. The big climb. How long is this going to take? I can pretty much guarantee we're not going to make it into sixth gear <laughs> in this car. Unless something pretty drastic changes. Let's see. Let's see. Will we make it into sixth gear? Oh, nah. I don't. I don't. No? Maybe? Nah. Nah. No sixth. It's topped out at about 221 kilometers per hour in fifth gear. Here we go. Bit of brake. Turn in. Oh, look at that. Balance. Just basically centering the steering wheel and the car rotates itself. I mean, that is what we call perfect uh, weight balance in a car. It's what the MX-5 is largely renowned for, if not speed. Now down to second. Nice hip and really easy through here. Just no problem at all as we approach the legendary carousel. Now, how much adhesion is the car going to have here? I'm going to take a guess and say it'll be reasonably straightforward <laughs> with its really floppy suspension, really high ride height, not a problem at all. These hot hatches, of course, are very high cars. Very, They ride very easily. You know, they're made to take the kids to school, do your shopping, and then maybe beat it around the track for five or six laps afterward and still get you home, basically, on the same set of brakes. Here we go. The Sector 3 now, possibly a little bit less exciting and wild than it was in the Porsche, but, you know, still Sector 3 all the same. Much more of a composed, easy driving experience. And we're looking at 5 minutes and 3 seconds now. The question is, will we make it? Will we make the record? 7 minutes 43, I believe it was. Intuition would tell me we have. We, we, can, we can probably make it if we push hard enough. I'm always just so surprised at this car's balance. I keep having to remind myself that this is like a stock tune. This is, this is how it comes from the shop. Look at that, bit of that mid-corner, corner exit understeer, which I guess you would expect under the circumstances, but it makes you wonder, if you put this thing on racing slicks, the balance would be superb. What a car. It's almost like it has a better physics model than the rest of the lineup in Gran Turismo. A little bit slow, wouldn't mind a little bit extra horsepower. Oh, look at that. It's just nice, nice, controllable snap, you know? It's a playful snap. Not one of those, you know, I've got to go to the toilet snaps that you get from the rear engine cars. Look at that. Just throwing the car down there. Just doesn't care about the curves at all. What an absolute beast. I'm going to break at the orange point, of course. Down to fourth. Can we hold on to the inside? Easy. Easy. We go down to third, rev the car out, all the power is in the high revs, VTEC baby. As we drop down to third again, do the mini carousel, and we are getting close to the end of the track. Now we're going to lose a bit of time here on the big straight, Dirtinger Hua, because, I mean, it's a big straight and we have no engine, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Four turbocharged cylinders, something I'm very familiar with, being an old GC8 owner. They certainly make more noise than they make power, but hey, <laughs> them's the brakes. Alright, so 6.52 under the gantry there. Not too bad. Very So we've already lost the Porsche record here. <laughs> so that kind of goes to show just how much quicker, uh, well, a, a lightly modded Porsche GT3 RS is. So we would have already finished the track over, what, 20 seconds ago? Crazy. Crazy. Nice and easy in this car. I'm not particularly worried. I know the braking zone is going to be nice, nice and comfortable. But what I'm wondering is, 7:23, will I make it on time? We have what, 15 seconds left? Here we go. 10 seconds. Oh man, are we gonna make it? I am pushing. I'm pushing the car so hard, trying to fight through the understeer. Come on, across the line. Yes! For a 7.42.9, that's just under a second quicker than the real-life record. Again, Gran Turismo 7 bringing the goods when put up against real life. What's to say? What a wonderful little car. While it may not get you across the finish line in record time, you're sure to cross it with a smile on your face. Definitely one of the best driving cars in the game. Would heartily recommend you give it a shot yourself. But before you do, let me know what other laps you want to see recreated in the comments down below. And while you're there, smash that subscribe button to not miss future videos.
We've got some big stuff on the horizon and I want to share it with you all. Consider grabbing some of the sweet Fanatec gear I use for this run or merch via the description links below to help support the channel. Otherwise, check out one of the cards above to see more sim racing degeneracy goodness. And until next time, I'll see you all later.